Imagine going a full day without food and realizing your body is already adjusting the way it uses energy. After about 24 hours, your glycogen levels drop sharply and your metabolism begins shifting toward burning fat instead of relying on muscle protein. Most people don't know that your body actually tries very hard to protect your muscle in the early stages of fasting, using hormones and ketones to keep tissue breakdown low. But if fasting continues for too long, that protection can fade and your muscles slowly become a source of fuel. This is the moment most people fear, yet few understand where it actually happens. So before you attempt a long fast, you need a clear picture of how long your muscles remain safe and when real muscle loss begins. When you fast for a long time, the changes inside your body begin quietly, long before you notice anything on the surface. Hormones like insulin, cortisol, and glucagon start reshaping how your cells decide what to burn and what to save. It's almost like your metabolism shifts into a slower, more cautious mode, protecting some systems while pressuring others. You may feel fatigued, sharper hunger waves, or unusual bursts of focus. And to understand how these first days actually unfold, we need to break the process down step by step. When you start a long fast, the first thing your body does is exactly what you'd expect. It goes straight for the easiest, most convenient fuel. For the first 12 to 24 hours, that fuel is the glucose floating around in your blood and the glycogen tucked away in your liver and muscles. Think of glycogen like the snacks people hide in their desk drawer at work. Quick, easy, nobody has to think too hard. Studies from Harvard and MIT show that glycogen stores can drop by more than half in the first day, especially if you're active. But here's the good news, muscle isn't on the menu yet. Your body is still operating in normal mode, not panic mode. Most people in this first window describe the same pattern. A few hunger waves, some moodiness, and the sudden realization that food commercials are way more dramatic than they remembered. Your muscles, however, are still completely safe. The body is burning what it was designed to burn first, and muscle doesn't make the cut unless you're in extreme starvation, which you're definitely not on day one. Between 24 and 48 hours, the real metabolic shift begins. This is where your system realizes the desk snacks are gone and starts asking bigger questions like, so, what are we doing next? And here's where biology becomes surprisingly elegant. Your body doesn't immediately grab protein from your biceps. Instead, it turns to fat. Research by Dr. George Cahill, famous for his detailed fasting studies, shows that ketone production ramps up dramatically in this window. Your liver breaks down stored fat, converts part of it into ketone bodies, and suddenly your brain has a new, cleaner fuel source. People often describe this phase with the same sentence, I feel weirdly okay. Hunger drops, mental clarity sneaks in, and your energy feels more stable. Some folks even feel almost too good and consider fasting forever. That's usually when someone nearby reminds them that food, in fact, still tastes pretty great. Why is your body so protective of muscle in this phase? Evolution Thousands of years ago, losing muscle during times without food meant you couldn't hunt, couldn't run, and couldn't do much besides think about your mistakes. So your body developed a very clear priority system. Burn fat first preserve muscle at all costs, at least in the early stages. Even modern studies using muscle biopsies show minimal muscle protein breakdown in the first two days of fasting. By the time you hit the 48 to 72 hour mark, your body enters what many researchers call deep metabolic mode. This is when autophagy begins to climb. Autophagy is basically your body taking out the cellular trash, old proteins, damaged mitochondria, useless leftovers from daily wear and tear. Instead of breaking down your muscle, your body starts recycling the junk. It's efficient, it's clean, and it's one of the reasons fasting has been linked to longevity. The research behind this won a Nobel Prize in 2016, so it's not just internet hype. People in this phase often say they feel lighter, calmer, and strangely focused. Hunger isn't gone, but it's no longer the loud, dramatic villain it was on day one. And again, your muscles remain protected. 
with ketones rising and fat doing most of the heavy lifting, your body has no reason to pull amino acids from muscle tissue. Now let's talk about days three to seven. The range that scares people the most but actually has some of the most interesting science behind it. Researchers call this the protein sparing stage, which is a surprisingly friendly name for something happening during a fast. And essentially, your body knows this isn't a quick skipped lunch anymore, but it still tries not to touch your muscle. Ketone levels rise high enough to fuel your brain almost fully. Fat oxidation becomes the main engine. Protein breakdown stays relatively low unless you're extremely lean or dehydrated. People who fast up to a week often report improved mental clarity, reduced bloating, and a noticeable drop in inflammation. Strength during heavy workouts may dip, but everyday muscle stability stays almost the same. In one seven-day fasting study, participants lost weight but maintained their leg strength, proving that lean mass loss on a scale doesn't automatically mean muscle fibers were destroyed. A lot of that disappearing weight is simply glycogen and water. This whole early to mid fasting window, roughly the first five to seven days, is your body's adaptation phase. It's your metabolism doing what it has been designed to do for thousands of years, keep you alive without sacrificing your ability to move, think, and function. Muscle loss isn't the first response, it's a last resort. As long as you have reasonable fat stores and proper hydration, your body keeps pulling from fat because it's the most efficient, least harmful energy source. So when people panic about losing muscle on day two or three of a fast, the science simply doesn't support that fear. Your body is smarter, calmer, and more strategic than you think. It's not trying to punish you, it's trying to protect you. Once you pass the seven-day mark, fasting stops feeling like a metabolic experiment and starts becoming a negotiation between your body and your energy reserves. Up to this point, your system has been running mostly on fat and ketones, doing everything it can to save your muscle. But after a week, especially if your body fat is on the lower side, that smooth balance begins to wobble. And yes, this is where muscle loss becomes more possible, not dramatic, not instant, but steady, like a slow subscription fee your body charges for staying alive. A major shift that happens here is an increase in gluconeogenesis. That's the process where your body makes glucose from amino acids. And where do amino acids come from? Protein. And where does most of your protein live? Your muscles Several studies from the Journal of Clinical Investigation show that as fasting continues beyond a week, the percentage of glucose made from amino acids starts creeping upward. It's not your body's first choice, but it's the only reliable way to feed tissues that can't use ketones, like certain brain cells and red blood cells. Some people in this phase report feeling lighter but weaker, which is basically your body saying, I'm doing my best, but we're running low. This is also the point where movement becomes extremely important. Research on caloric deficits shows that active muscle, muscle that is used, stretched, or put under tension, is far less likely to be broken down. So even simple body weight movements, light resistance bands, or just daily walking sends a message, hey, don't touch this tissue, we still need it. Think of it like leaving a lamp on in your house so burglars think someone's home. Meanwhile, lying on the couch all day tells your body the opposite. Nothing going on here. Feel free to scrap whatever parts you want. Electrolytes matter even more in long fasts. Sodium, potassium, and magnesium help your neurons fire, your muscles contract, and your heart keep a steady rhythm. When these drop, people often think, oh no, I'm losing muscle, when what they're actually experiencing is low minerals. Cramping, fatigue, dizziness, and shaky legs aren't signs of muscle melting, they're signs of poor electrolyte support. Long fasts without minerals are like hiking without water. You can do it, but your body will file several complaints. Hormones shift, too. Cortisol starts creeping up because your body is trying hard to maintain blood sugar. A little cortisol is normal, it's what gets you out of bed. But too much, especially combined with a deep calorie deficit, encourages your body to use protein for fuel. Studies on prolonged fasting show a noticeable increase in nitrogen loss, a marker of protein breakdown, past the seven-day point. 
It's not a disaster, but it's a sign. You're officially leaving the safe adaptation zone and entering the please proceed carefully zone. People who go past a week of fasting describe the experience in very different ways. Some say they feel incredibly calm, focused, and mentally sharp, almost meditative. Others report feeling cold, weaker, or more tired than before. Neither reaction is wrong. It simply reflects how individual fasting becomes once you're deep into it. Your genetics, body fat percentage, stress levels, and hydration all affect how well you hold on to muscle during an extended fast. The truth is, even in this stage, muscle breakdown is not some dramatic collapse. Your body doesn't suddenly eat your muscle like a cartoon piranha. It's more like small withdrawals from a savings account, manageable at first but not sustainable forever. If you keep fasting long enough, the math eventually stops working in your favor. At that point, the fuel has to come from somewhere, and protein becomes an unavoidable source. But here's the empowering part. You still have a lot of control. Light resistance training protects muscle. Good sleep keeps cortisol lower. Proper electrolyte balance keeps you functioning. And, most importantly, knowing when to stop makes all the difference. Fasting is a tool, not a competition, and definitely not a punishment. And when it's finally time to break your fast, the first meal becomes the switch that turns your metabolism back toward building. High-quality protein, especially leucine-rich foods like eggs, fish, and tofu, activates muscle protein synthesis almost immediately. Studies on post-fast refeeding show that muscles become extremely hungry for amino acids, meaning they absorb and use protein more efficiently than usual. In other words, breaking your fast properly doesn't just save your muscle, it can help rebuild it stronger. So yes, fasting can sharpen your mind, reset your metabolism, reduce inflammation, and burn fat more efficiently. But push it too far, skip electrolytes, stop moving, or ignore your body's signals, and your muscle becomes part of the payment. The secret is knowing where that line is, and making sure you stop long before you cross it. Used wisely, fasting is powerful. Used blindly, it's risky. The difference isn't luck, it's strategy. Now you have a clear picture of what really happens to your muscles during a long fast. You've seen where the safe zone ends and where muscle loss actually begins. With that knowledge, you can fast in a way that supports your health instead of hurting it. Stay hydrated, keep your body moving, and don't ignore the signs that you've gone too far. Your strength is worth protecting. If this video helped make things clearer, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your experience with fasting. And if you want more simple science-based explanations like this, tap like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and when you're ready, check out the next video on how fasting affects your immune system.